Welcome to Roleplay Roulette, where we take the bullets for you. It's Halloween month again, and we endeavor to bring you shivers, scares, and dark nightmares. Now I know what you're thinking. Fox, didn't these guys beg you to do Savage Riffs? Of course, but this is no ordinary review. This is the month that should not be. I don't remember ever asking for Savage Riffs. I remember specifically asking not to. Look, guys, for the last time, stop asking me for Savage Riffs. I want to do something spooky. If you listen to our podcast, you know that we've discussed at length the particular challenges and requirements posed by the prospect of running a horror-based game. How do you get the players to buy in? How do you retain an atmosphere of apprehension and discomfort without letting the game get frustrating or tedious? How long can horror sustain itself without becoming routine and mundane? Many games have tried to address this in different ways and to different extents, usually by sacrificing theme for longevity. This year, we'd like to look at a game that dives wholeheartedly into the theme itself, choosing to focus entirely on the storytelling of fear. So don your spooky costumes, light your jack-o'-lanterns, and arm yourselves with treat bags, kiddies, for it is the month that should not be. This is Dread by Epidio Ravicle. Dread is, as to be expected, a game that focuses entirely on horror-based shared storytelling. As such, it attempts to address the genre's challenges. The first step it takes is to eschew the standard RPG format of planning for campaigns and focuses entirely on one-shot adventures. This allows the player to focus entirely on the here and now, and the GM to pack the entirety of the game's rising action into one package. Without the need to plan multiple sessions, one needn't worry that the players are beginning to feel that the threat is fading. This also sets the stakes. They only have now. Second, Dread builds characters without any numbers at all. The entirety of Caregen is a questionnaire taken from the book or customized by the GM. There's no room to number crunch, no abstraction, just facts about who your characters are. If approached in earnest, this will make the players determine what the character is good at while forcing them to become intimate with whom they're playing. If you aren't building a person, you aren't preparing to play. Third, Dread issues hard rules almost entirely. The players can do what they are allowed to do by the Game Master, providing they stick to what their character knows. And of course, what they're willing to risk, because above all, stands the tower. The tower is something we need to talk about, because it is very important and a highly unique point of interest. Rather than handle task resolution with dice, points, or cards, Dread takes a more precarious route. The game revolves around a Jenga tower. If you're not familiar, Jenga is a game played by building a stack of long, flat blocks. Each player attempts to pull a block without collapsing the tower. Each time a block is drawn, it is placed back on top. In other words, the tower grows taller, thinner, and less stable. Dread asks the players to build a tower and demands they pull a block whenever they want to do something dangerous, risky, strenuously difficult, or extremely beneficial. This is how it builds tension and where it really earns its name. Each pull of the block is an act of apprehensive threat, a test of heart-pounding dexterity, another step towards the moment the tower collapses. And it will. It's inevitable. The tower is growing ever thinner, looser, more rickety, and precarious, and it's the razor-thin thread between life and death. When the tower falls, and it will fall, it's all over for you or someone you care about. One may find themselves wondering, is Dread the name of the game, or the tower itself? Okay, the very first thing I want to talk about is our fancy new tablecloth. Isn't it nice? Uh, oh, nice? Which is coming up by, it, it looks like on the monitor it's showing up really well. Uh, this is a tablecloth with a dungeon map on it. Um, I'm trying to remember the name of the company. I'll definitely have that linked below. I think. <laughs> Second thing I want to talk about is our awesome Halloween costumes. I was going to make a costume for of Witch Dagger, but I did not get around to going and getting a big dumb fake sword to put through the hat. So I just didn't bother getting out the wizard robe to go with it and just put on a Knight in the Woods shirt instead. Johnny Artie is dressed as Hannibal from the super gay TV show Hannibal. And Jay is dressed as the ghost of fun. Yes. <laughs> because he refused to put on a costume at all am, uh, for the I'm Halloween a season. old man. <laughs> Okay, so Dread, which I actually really like. The big issue that I run into with Dread, I have a really hard time getting people psyched up for one-shot games. That's that is a that is a that is a 
point of contention I, you might run into. Right, I, I tend to get attached to characters, so. and I want to stick with them. I believe they intend for you to rebuild the tower whenever a single player drops it, because that's generally when a character dies. Right, in yeah. a, and, or but is otherwise removed. That works very. That can work all right with small games, especially one-on-one -on -one sessions. Yeah. But I see that becoming a problem when you have a large table. You spend a lot of time rebuilding that tower. But the trick is making sure that you don't have to just, you know, bring the game to a screeching halt to rebuild because that then counteracts the whole purpose of the tower. It's This is another of those things you brought to the table for a review. And I was kind of like Jenga tower. That's that's kind of that's kind of out there. And this is one of those games where I feel like it's not for me two reasons for that. It's one of those things that this is like, this reminds me more of a how to host a murder than it does an RPG. I'm used to having at least something to engage with mechanically. Yeah. And there isn't anything. No, this Don't is just you like diceless systems. No, the but playing is the game. The story well, is the game. Surviving is the granted. game. And this is, like I said, this is a personal opinion. Like I said, I think the game is that like having read this book, the gentleman that wrote it, he obviously understands what he set out to do. Did it in an effective way, understands the genre he's playing off of, and has an understanding of the horror genre and how to work that into a gaming scenario, which we've yeah. talked about at length in our podcast and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I can, it's like I said, I can admire what he's trying to do here, but it's just one of those things where, one, I've, I think I've said on, I've said on the podcast, I, I indicated that I, I have a hard time buying into horror games. That's fair. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's that's the issue. I, I have a hard time engaging with it because like, with the game aspect because there, it's barely there. Normally, I'm the same way, so. but I really like Dread. Um, well, it's right up your alley. Though. It is, isn't it? The other the, the, the other one is a much more prosaic concern. I have an issue with the idea of putting in-game stuff that my character does and basing it off of something, I, some physical skill that I have. Cards on the table, that might be because I suck at Jenga. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so well, the more you suck at Jenga, I admit this. The more you suck at Jenga, the more you're you gotta worry. Yeah, I mean, but I'm just saying, if you put a, a you oh, know a no. brain surgeon and I gotta pull the block, you know, oh, if you, Joy Random, I suck at Jenga. You suck at shutting up. Oh, he does. He does suck I'm at that. I'm gonna make the tower full. But uh, oh, but yeah, it's it's just one of those things where there are girls watching. They're gonna laugh at me. Part of the reason you play RPGs is to play someone different from yourself, and I don't yeah, want my success yeah. or failure to be whether I have a steady hand. We yeah, have well, think about in it in real life. Yeah, think about the absolute horror of being in a situation where the character's success or failure depends not on their Jenga skill but yours. Yeah, that's Saul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, getting down to brass tacks, yeah. <laughs> One of the ways that horror is very effective for me is that I have an anxiety issue and really good horror makes me really anxious. So dread basing, you know, life or death situations around the draw of a of a Jenga tower really, really works for me. Like it's easy for me to get in the headspace of my characters. And it is very easy for me to be aware of danger at all times, <laughs> especially in RPGs. So you're saying so that's something I really you like, like it. about it? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I, find I didn't it, mean to cut you off. That's okay. I find it really, really effective, personally, even though I, too, suck at Jenga. <laughs> and also something you and I like horror yeah. a lot. <laughs> that is <laughs> like, that is extremely true. Like, I really, really like horror. That's something that I'm really into. Right. And I believe that's the case for you as well. I would assume so. <laughs> so. You're always subjecting yourself to it. I say, I'm sitting here dressed like a famous cannibal. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> I am often more impressed with a the concept of a horror movie than its execution. Right. Yeah. Well, also, like what I was going to say is you have to engage. Yeah. So you're engaging. Jay is not engaging. You're not going to get the same experience. And yeah. nobody is required to engage. It's not. Yeah. Nobody is required to like horror. So as far as so. dread itself goes, my overall feeling is that it is a really interesting idea. I'll concede um, that. It, ha it I, in my opinion, completely realizes what it's trying to do. I think maybe a little pricey for how small the book is and how thin the... That's a fair point. But yeah. there, is, there is a lot of writing in there about what the thing is and what you're trying to do. Yeah, I mean, whether you're going to run dread or not, um, it's a good read. Yeah. So if you want to, if you want to bring just the horror to the table, that is this is I absolutely recommend this game. 
John. I recommend it as well. Um, especially, like, if you want an atmosphere where, you know, you are encouraged to take risks, to have fun with those risks, and to, you know, make it more dangerous the more risks you take, which I really, really like in games. I like the risk and reward, reward system. I kind of like the roulette of it all. <laughs> I see what you did there. Yep. Oh, you so, said the name of the movie! So I, I recommend it, definitely. And this is this is going to be, like, incongruous, but I actually recommend this game. Oh, okay. With a caveat. Think about it for a second. If you are into horror, yeah, I don't think I've seen a better actually, like, playing a horror movie kind of game. It is less a game and more an exercise. Like, all role-playing is an exercise in shared storytelling, Dread is almost nothing but. It is a game that if you if you if you are an enthusiast of this of this sort of genre and you're willing to kind of engage the way that I apparently can't, I can see it being a blast. Yeah. So a qualified recommendation, I guess is what I'll say. <laughs> I think that's fair. So, a qualified recommendation from Roleplay Roulette. If you like horror, you like rules like games that focus really, really heavily just straight down into the role playing itself, get dread. I think that this is a cool thing to have on your shelf. Sure. Go check out our subscribe button to get more RPG reviews next month. I'm not sure what we're going to do exactly yet because that's how lazy and behind we're we are. We're behind a couple of things. <laughs> we're behind a couple of things. <laughs> Click on the link in the description. <laughs> Give us a like. We love likes and uh, you okay. love giving them. It makes you, it'll uh, it'll fill your heart with joy. It'll fill your heart with Halloween spirit. We've got Halloween Oreos over there. I meant to have them on the table, but I don't. And that's fine because we've got this awesome, awesome tablecloth for our set. And it's all role-playing gamey and awesome and we're excited about it i want to give a big shout out to our patreon subscribers this month georg Mir, our good friend and creator of mictim uh, i'll put a link to his the review of his game down there as well and crowned rat who is super cool to us on twitter and is really nice to back us at the follow for more goblin facts we'll see you next time boils and ghouls